how to choose the right trekking pole for you. I'm Coach Josh, and today we're going to talk about, well, trekking poles. And you might have seen my other video I've done a few years back on how to use trekking poles. If you haven't, you definitely want to check that out because that goes into, well, what we're actually supposed to do with these things and even why you should use them. Because if you're out backpacking, you should be using trekking poles basically for a bunch of reasons. So go check that out or hit me up if you have any questions. Now, let's look at some features of a trekking pole. So I've got a couple options here. Both are Comperdale brand because this is my preference. I've used many other brands before, but let's look at a few things we need to keep in mind when deciding what's gonna work for us. So first thing, we're gonna to wanna to look at the wrist strap material, handle or grip material, what the actual shaft is made out of, uh, the type of locks, and then even how many segments a trekking pole might have, and then tips, because that makes a difference. Now, let's look at why we might choose one over the, over the other. We're just gonna start at the top, literally at the top of the trekking pole, and break it down from there. So let's look at wrist straps. So you definitely want wrist straps, and you need to make sure that they are adjustable, so you can make them suit you and you're going to do a few different things to adjust them depending on what type of train not training <laughs> trekking you're doing so the material itself most of these are just some sort of nylon webbing there's a few things here i'm just going to pop this one down we'll get into that in a second but let's look nice and close so the strap itself is usually simple nylon webbing and sometimes you get a bit of padding now some of these are a little bit nicer with more padding and some are contoured so this has a narrow bit into a locking mechanism uh, and it's a little wider where it crosses the wrist. Some of these are much wider and some of these have much more padding. Now, when looking at what wrist strap you like, I always wanna make sure it is wider over the back of the wrist and has at least a little bit of padding. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. It's my preference uh, to have a little bit of width and a little bit of padding, but some of them are a lot more simple. If it's a really cheap one, you might find there's no padding or it's all the same length and it's just attached to the top of the pole. I really don't like that. I like the customization and the ability to adjust the length with some sort of locking mechanism that is very secure. This one has a little, little chalk block in there uh, with some teeth. You shove that in and it gets tight based on how, how hard you pull on it essentially. So I want adjustability. I cannot see a reason that having adjustability would ever be to your detriment. Some of them just are anchored to the top and they're not very adjustable. There is no real weight saving or real, real uh, durability issue with having an adjustable wrist strap. So I'd always make sure it's adjustable and that it's comfortable because this is gonna be pulling on the back of your wrist. This is gonna take the majority of our weight and pressure. We don't actually hold the handle much and you can see why on the other video I did but we're not sitting here gripping the handle. And I always want a wrist strap because that is going to be more efficient than just grabbing this, plus the ability to use the wrist strap for pressure in a lot of situations uh, is probably the most benefic beneficial aspect of looking at the handle. And also, you don't lose them. So definitely want straps, definitely want them adjustable, and they just need to be comfortable for you. They don't have to be fancy, just comfortable for you. Now let's look at handle material. I'll bring back this other one here. So this is a lower end Comfordel one. This is a higher end one. And what we see is that this one is a hard plastic handle, which might be fine for you because you're not actually gonna grip it much, but I'm a big fan of foam. I've also used them with cork. I had a pair of black diamond ones that were cork, and I really like the cork. Uh, it feels really good. And the thing with foam or cork is that they absorb sweat, which means the handle doesn't get slick. Now, cork is heavier, and I don't really know if it's much more durable. I've not had any issues with foam or cork. Obviously, a harder plastic is basically invincible. You'll also see that this handle extends further down, this one doesn't. I prefer this one because when we are going up hills and we are reaching above ourselves, sometimes we just need to grab a little bit lower on the handle. We might just use it almost like an ice pick in snowy or icy uh, situations, and we might need to grab lower to anchor ourselves onto a much higher, say, platform or scramble. 
So I prefer having a little bit of a lengthened handle. You don't need it though. It's just nice in my opinion. <clears throat> now let's look at the actual shaft material. So the main thing here is pretty much anything is going to be strong enough. This one is uh, carbon, carbon up here. And although they call it a carbon pole, it's carbon there, carbon there. The third, oh, I did these two tight. There you go. The third part is actually just aluminum, aluminum. Uh, and that's fine too. So looking at the material is going to tell you a few things. One, how light it is. So aluminum, aluminum uh, is pretty light. Carbon is lighter. I've had some cheap entry level poles that are some sort of steel. Uh, they're fine too, but generally a more expensive one is going to be much lighter. Now this is carbon and you'll notice it is quite a bit thicker than this, although it's still lighter. So it's a little bit thicker for a bit more rigidity. This is thinner because aluminum is a little bit more sturdy, I guess. Uh, but in general, we're looking at materials because it's going to be more or less weight. And we always want to try and go for the lightest weight, most durable option for the type of adventure we're going on. So there's going to be options there. Now let's look at how they're actually put together. Notice how much longer this is and how much shorter this is. That is because this one here is a two piece pull. This is a three piece. That just means that when I'm traveling somewhere, this is going to fit into my suitcase a lot better and it's going to pack into my backpack if needed, much smaller. This doesn't always fit well into a suitcase. So if you have to travel a lot, I prefer one that is usually three pieces and gets quite small. If we're looking at locking mechanisms, you'll notice both of these have an external locking mechanism. I always go external. There's two other main types. There is internal telescopic where you twist them and they shrink into each other. Uh, and then there's the ones that pull apart and fold. So there's a band or a rope of some sort, a cord of some sort in the middle. They pull apart like tent poles. I don't like anything with an internal locking mechanism because of durability. If I am out on the trail and this lock gets dirty or slippery, uh, just a Phillips head on that, I can take it apart, clean it out, put it together, tighten it with a pocket knife, with a multi-tool. The internal locking mechanisms can be really, really difficult to manage if you have any sort of uh, break or too much mud or sand gets gunked up in there. You have to take the whole pole apart and there's little bits that can fall apart and then the lock doesn't work. These are very robust and adjustable on the trail with any sort of flat implement. So I always prefer an, an outsider external locking mechanism. Uh, these are an aluminum latch, which again is very sturdy. This is a plastic latch. I haven't had a plastic latch fail, but just the feel of them makes me worried because they're very light and I don't trust them. I would much prefer that I had an external aluminum locking mechanism. Now, so we've looked at strap, handle, shaft, shaft material, length, external locking mechanisms. Let's look at the tips here. Now this one being more of an entry level pole, has just a rounded metal cap. This has a carbide tip. Now, my preference is obviously for the fancier one. <laughs> the carbide tip, uh, these are replaceable. I've had replacement tips for these Comfordel poles, but the reason I like the carbide tip is that it actually is sharp. So when you're dealing with slippery boardwalk uh, or you're dealing with slippery rock, that bites into stone quite well. Now you don't wanna be using that on your nice hardwood floors when you're practicing in the house. But that biting ability, because it's a very hard metal, allows you to dig into almost any surface and get purchase. That does not, but that doesn't really wear down. These will, and I've worn through tips on poles before, and then you have to replace the whole tip. So that's just pros and cons. This is gonna be a little bit more durable, but the amount of use you're gonna get out of one of these is a lot. Other things to think about is baskets. So this is uh, a basic mud basket. I don't have any of these because I rarely use them. Pros, it stops the tip of your pole from sinking into the mud. Cons, it's extra weight and something that can easily fall off. So generally I don't use them for much of anything, 
They are handy if you're on boardwalk and you have one of the shorter tipped poles. So I've used the, uh, the black diamond ones and they have a shorter tip. And so the basket was about here. And so I would use those, but it was a very small basket. I would use those when I was guiding on trails that had a lot of boardwalk sections because it wouldn't go through the space and the slats. But in general, I don't use them. Now I do have snow baskets as well. And if your trekking poles double up as uh, cross country ski poles or snowshoeing poles, then a snow basket could be really handy because it's a little bit wider. It's usually got holes in it to make it lighter and allows you to use your poles in the snow without them sinking in. So in general, nah, I don't use them. Uh, they do have purpose. They might make you feel more secure. They do add extra weight. And again, we want to try and balance that weight and durability on everything we have. And so if you see me talk about layering systems or backpacks, you'll see that as well. I talk a lot about the balance between durability and the weight of the implement. So things we need to think about across the board when picking trekking poles, we need to look at the straps and how they're gonna suit us, the handle material, the shaft material, how many pieces it breaks into, have a look at the type of locking mechanism you have as well, and what's gonna fit your price range and durability needs. And then looking at the tip and whether or not you want any fancy accessories and why you might want them. Keep in mind these things do get lost pretty easy and it can be a pain to try and replace them. And then looking at the type of tip for the type of adventure and terrain you're going on. So how to think about that and let me know if you have any questions.